earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahuwah, as the waters cover the sea. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom! Thank you so much for joining us here at Remnant House, the home of the strong and the very courageous. And Mama and I are always thankful every week uh, when you join us and remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Amen and amen. And I'm so thankful for all of you who are here with us on the chat. If you're, uh, if you're on our website, uh, which is where many of you will be watching this broadcast. Uh, we installed the chat just so we would keep having uh, that experience. And, uh, you know, again, we're going to continue to have warfare as we go forward because whenever you're speaking the truth, uh, anytime you're revealing the devices of the wicked one, uh, that's going to produce, uh, elicit a response, and the enemy is going to come for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so just understand that we are in a war, a straight up war. Whenever there are lives being taken, livelihoods being destroyed, uh, families being destroyed, and actual physical deaths. I don't know what you call that, but we call that a war where I came from. Amen. And so this is where we are. We are in the midst of great warfare in the earth. And why is this warfare manifest? Because the powers that have been running earth do not want to cede their power to the king. But he's not running for king, and he doesn't need anyone's vote. He is king. Amen. Amen. And so this is the thing that they're warring against. This is the real war, saints. This is not about your particular rights or your issues. They are holding you ransom because they know that he is coming. Amen. And judgment upon them is permanent. They cannot get out of it. The only hope they had legally was that out of compassion for one of you, he would vacate a judgment against one of you, and they would then be able to take that vacating of a judgment into his court and argue that their judgment should be vacated, which is why they're working so hard to get him to back off this permanent, eternal judgment. But it won't work because his judgments are are true they are yea and amen. amen and so this is where they are and they are waking up and the time has come to an end and they are frantic these spirits are horrifically frantic they are uh, beyond um, um, uh, filled with anxiety uh, so again these spirits when they come in they come in like a flood and they're coming like think think pigs going over the cliff they are rabid and crazy. They have lost all sense. They're running from the king. They can feel his increasing presence, even as you can feel it. And they don't know what to do. This has never happened before. A man, you have to understand that. They, they've never experienced They They have known this was coming for a long time, but now it's finally here. And so today we're going to talk about something that they're all, the wicked are all afraid of, the evil in the earth are all afraid of. But I'm telling you that this is a fact and it is not something that can be stopped. No matter how much money they spend, no matter how many televisions they have, how many studios they create, they can't stop that the earth will be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. The earth will be filled with his glory. 
glory. And we need to get into this because many people do not understand just what that means. And we've seen many scripture passages that uh, sound like just utter destruction. And if you were standing at Mount Sinai, you might have thought it was the end of the world. Turn with me, saints, to Exodus chapter 16 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 9, and it says, And Moses spake unto Aaron, uh, say, And Moses spake unto Aaron, Say unto all the children of Yasharel, Come near before Yahuwah, for he hath heard your murmurings. Uh-oh. Now I'm going to tell you, saints, there's a whole lot of people murmuring right now. They're arguing and debating. They are fighting one another, biting and devouring one another. And this, Yahuwah is hearing it. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole con congregation of the children of Yasharel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of Yahuwah appeared in the cloud. The glory of Yahuwah appeared in the cloud. These are natural men, natural carnal people, and they are beholding the glory of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Yasharel. Speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, and the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew was laid, was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoar frost on the ground. And when the children of Yasarel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. For they wist not what it was. And Moshe said unto them, This is the bread Yahuwah, gave, Yahuwah hath given you to eat, which Yahuwah hath given you to eat. Amen. And so we know from the book of Revelation that there is a hidden manna, the daily bread we must eat. Amen. In fact, the, we are taught, Messiah taught us to pray a daily prayer. I can't come any further than 20 feet out of my dwelling before that prayer comes out of my mouth. Amen. We've got to pray that prayer every single day to take dominion over all wickedness and to stand in the place on the earth that he's called us to be in and under authority. Amen. And it's a very powerful thing. Uh, and if you don't have a revelation on the prayer of the king, you need that in order to endure these days. And there's tremendous amounts of warfare that is going on in the household of faith right now. There's a lot of murmuring and complaining. There's a lot of backbiting and debating. And a man, I, I appreciate people's studies. I appreciate uh, people taking the time to do videos because they've done a study and they've done this and they've done that. And I appreciate that. And that's a good thing. And even though we might not agree with one another, it is still a good thing to put yourself to the study of a matter. So rather than resolve a matter, I like the fact that a certain matters are not resolved so that you could go and decide for yourself. You can go pray and seek him and seek things out. Amen. Uh, and so there are times when we may not agree with our brethren. That's all right. They're still our brethren. Let me tell you something. Um, I love my brothers. I love my brothers and my sisters. And I want to tell you, I take it very seriously. And I think we all need to take it very seriously when our brothers and sisters are attacked or harmed in any way. It's one thing to debate a, 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 a topic, okay, and to get into something, but to get to where you're murmuring and complaining against one another and hurting and devouring one another and starting to be, it, it, this is when Yahuwah shows up in his glory. Mm, amen. This is when Papa shows up. So all this murmuring and complaining needs to stop in the household of faith. Amen. I understand people are in different levels of revelation. And you know something? Leave them there. You let the Ruach of Emet lead them into all truth. Instead of feeling this obligation to correct everyone else's every little tiny potential mistake. If they didn't ask you, then don't answer. Amen. If you're on this channel, I assume you've come here to get some things that he's given to this house. If you didn't, then you shouldn't be here, right? But if you're here to receive, then may you be blessed. May your household be blessed. But this whole fighting and biting and devouring one another is in direct contravention to the scripture.
whatever you're dividing and devouring about might be vague, but the thing you're doing is not vague. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you might be debating on a topic. This is free for somebody that may be, you know, completely valid or valid topic, but the way you're going about it, hurting and biting and devouring one another, hurting one another, disrespecting one another. Let me tell you something. I have people in my family that I don't agree with, that I don't agree with doctrinally. They may have a doctrinal belief that I don't agree with, but if you lay a finger on them, if you lay a finger on them, you're going to war with me. Right. Amen. You over over my body will you reach my brother? That's even though they might be wrong, even though they may be in error, that's still my brother. Amen. And we need to stop feeling like, oh, the only people we can call our brethren are people who agree with us a thousand percent. Please, you must be a party of one. Amen. Because we are all moving through revelation. So we're all learning and growing and becoming and transforming by the renewing of our mind. So please don't get too dogmatic about what you believe is the most important truth of the day. Instead, we need to remember not to bite and devour and murmur against one another. Now, this murmuring was so bad that Yahuwah Elohim responds. This is why I'm telling you this, because he's coming, and his response to murmurs and complainers is not a good one. He is not a fan, okay, of murmuring and complaining. He is very clear about that. He left an entire generation to die in the wilderness because they couldn't zip the lip, because they just presumed they knew what he was doing, and they couldn't zip it, and they started talking before he was done. Don't interrupt Elohim when he's still bringing his plan out. And he doesn't need to approve that plan with anyone on earth. Amen. Including the prophetic and apostolic voices that he has put upon the earth. Now in this passage, he tells us very clearly that there were murmurings and complainings in the, in the camp. Uh, of course, Moses was enduring all of this. And Yahuwah has Moses' back. You need to see this very important. Because even though Moses is just a man, and, and in, the, in the fact that, or the reality that we are all men, therefore we are all equal, in fact that is true. However, when a vessel is separated and designated a holy set-apart vessel by Yahuwah himself, that person is now standing in an office. The office is not the same as a human being. The human beings all have the same equality. But when you now are standing in an office, okay, that is different. This is now official. And so this is why we call it an office, right? Because it's official. It is now done. And this person is now the office is who you're referring to, not the person. So the people that warred against Moses were not just warring against him, the person, they were arguing with his office. And this Yahuwah does not allow. Amen. And so even though we may find ourselves and brethren in error, we are to entreat an elder um, with, with great respect. We are to entreat one another with great love. We're not supposed to be coming into anybody's life saying, Okay, because that's vanity. And we talked about that last week. And so the children of Israel were committing a great sin before Yahuwah in complaining. And they were learning and it cost them. They did not enter the promised land. Their children did, but the, the anyone over 20 years old got judged for this complaining. And so this is one of the things that we're looking at today uh, in, in this hour, because there are so many people that are committed to this a bad habit, uh, this form of entertainment, which is to complain and murmur against the leaders Yahuwah is raising in this hour. Mm -hmm. And so be very careful about that. Be very sensitive. Ask Yahuwah questions. Don't just presume that you're safe to say and do whatever, because it was the words of these people's mouth that got them judged and left in the desert. It was just the words of their mouth. So you live and die by the words of your mouth. And don't think that because somebody who you're talking about is so far away they can't hear you, you still need to respect that person's office, even if they may personally be in error in certain areas. 
all right? Their personal life may have some errors, all right? But that doesn't change their office. This is the part we have to come back to respecting. And that way we won't get ourselves into too many difficulties in the days to come. There's going to be a lot of repentance that people have to give to say, I'm sorry I spoke against you because I disagreed with you on a point or on an issue or on a matter. I began to speak against you as a vessel in your office. This is where you cross a line and get into serious trouble and you're touching the glory of Yahuwah. Now, let me explain. The office is the glory of Yahuwah. Notice that at the beginning of this passage, Yahuwah speaks to Moses, tells him to talk to Aaron. Aaron goes and speaks to the children of Israel. As soon as he begins to talk to him, it says it came to pass as Aaron spake. So watch this. Yahuwah knows exactly what he's doing. He waits, he waits until the message goes from Moses to Aaron, to the people before he begins to manifest his glory in the cloud. So he waited for the sequence to occur so that when the people saw his glory in the cloud, they would know how to respond appropriately. Okay, and behold, the glory of Yahuwah appeared in the cloud and Yahuwah spake unto Moses saying, I've heard the murmuring of the children of Yasharel. That should be enough for you. I mean, can you imagine if he said, I heard the murmurings of your house and he's speaking to your family. I heard the murmurings and complainings that you spoke against my servant. I heard the murmurings and complaining that you did in the quiet when you didn't think anybody was hearing you. Some people, Yahuwah removes from your life because they heard, he heard what they said in the quiet. Some people Yahuwah removed from my life. And I'm going, what happened to that person? I thought they were my friend. And what I didn't know is what Yahuwah heard. That's right. That's right. And he's jealous for his anointed. He is jealous for his vessels. And so he didn't care for this murmuring and complaining. And he brought quail to shut them up, to fill them so full that they couldn't complain anymore. And then he brought the manna. Right. And it was something that they had never seen before. Can I just say this? There are things you have never seen before that Yahuwah has planned. I have not seen nor ear heard, nor hath it entered into the heart of man. The things Yahuwah Elohim hath planned for those who love him. And so if you think you got this all figured out or that it's going to be managed by your intellect, I've got some news for you. It's actually good news. Your brain isn't the one that's going to run you through the great tribulation. Your mind is not the one that's going to give you the overcoming ability. You need the mind of Messiah. Amen. You know, amen. And so the glory of Yahuwah began to manifest right there in their midst. Now, I want to take you a little deeper into this glory here a minute because I want you to get a feel for this. Now, I want you to imagine this. So you're imagine this being you. Yahuwah took you out from among people. He anoints you. He separates you. And he says, you're going to be my vessel. And he talks to Moses and Aaron. This is his vessels. And he says, you're going to be my vessels. And when I speak to you, I want you to go tell the people, right? So they do what he tells them. And the people are yawning like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, Moses. All right, sure. And here comes Yahuwah's glory. Oof. And all of a sudden, the people are like, whoa, okay, uh, okay. Why? Because they suddenly started to see manifestation of the authority that was given not only to Moses and Aaron, but that the flow of the anointing, the flow of authority was not going to be happenstance. It was going to go decently and in order. And suddenly they had new respect for Moses, didn't they? Oh, yes, they did. All of a sudden they have new respect because they see that Yahuwah doesn't go around him. He won't allow them, watch this, he won't allow none of the children of Israel to go around Moses. He won't let it happen. He continues to back up Moses. He continues to, to stand with him, to authorize him. And to demonstrate that he is under authority. These others are not. You see the difference. And there were he was outnumbered by, you don't even want to know how many were, were trying to pop smoke and act as if they were just as good as him. Right. It was not just one person. 
This was spirits, saints, and you know enough to know how spirits with massive egos all think they should run everything. Right? right? And so Yahuwah had to designate his vessel. He had to designate him, and he had to set him apart, and he had to be born special. He had to be raised special. He had to be taught special. He had to be set apart a special way. Amen? All so that he could do this job. And so Yahuwah's glory begins to manifest, and he showed his glory. Uh, and so this is why I want you to take a look at this, because this is something that's going to fill the entire earth. Now we're going to get a different viewpoint. Turn with me to De Deuteronomy 5. Again, the glory of Yahuwah. And this is an important picture for the days to come. And I'm going to explain to you why here in a moment. So Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 23. And it came to pass when you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire. Are you catching this? Are you catching this, saints? The mountain burned with what? Fire. Burned with fire. It's still burnt to this day. Amen. Uh, and when you heard the voice out of the midst of the mountain, for the mountain did burn with fire, that you came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and, on your, and your elders. Right? And all of them came because why? This is Moses telling them. And he said, Behold, you who are Elohim has showed us his glory and his greatness. We have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that Elohim doth talk with man and he liveth. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he's doing a new thing. He's talking with man again. He hasn't done that for a while, right? Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. Look at this. Do you see what, he's, do you see what they're saying? What did they just say? This great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of Yahuwah Elohim anymore, then we shall die. Watch this now. For who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living Elohim speak out of the midst of the fire, and have lived, and we ha and have lived as we have lived? Go thou near, hear all that Yahuwah Elohim shall say, and speak thou unto us all that Yahuwah Elohim shall speak unto thee, and we will hear and do it. Oh, oh, wait! Weren't you just murmuring about this guy? Didn't you just? Weren't y'all just, at the same group of people were acting like he was nothing special. Complained at him for water, complained at him for everything. It was, did you bring us out here to die? All of a sudden, because they see the glory of Yahuwah. They say, you, you, you go ahead. You go ahead, Moshe. You go on up the mountain now, and you go ahead and get all those commandments. And we'll just do whatever you say. Watch why. Why? Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. Are they wrong? No, they are not. For we serve our Elohim and he is a what? Consuming fire. Amen. So they were not wrong. You will either... Run from it or be thrown in it, but you're going to deal with the fire, okay? Um, and you're going to have to deal with fire. Amen. Fire is purifier. That's what it is. Fire purifies. Amen. That's when I asked him uh, many, many, many years ago. This is over 25 years ago. I asked him this question. Why does it say the Holy Ghost and fire? I thought the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, was the fire. And he began to explain to me that the Ruach is the emet, uh, the spirit of truth, and the fire that he brings you through is purification. Mm -hmm. It's purification. Well, many of you are enduring fires right now. Many of you are going through some fires right this second. And so instead of going through the fire, you're saying, uh, no, you guys go ahead and just let me know what it says. You go ahead and do a broadcast. You go ahead and do a video. You go ahead and shout us back and let us know if it's great up ahead. How many know that this was the this was a moment for them that I believe dramatically affected their judgment of whether they would go into the promised land or not? Amen. Because how many know that we have to be we have to embrace the calling of Yahuwah. And that is going to be a consuming fire. Now, that is a separate matter. One thing I want to point out here is what do they see physically? Physically. 
Mama, what were they looking at? When they looked up that mountain, when they were standing there shaking in their boots like this, <laughs> they're feeling heat from the flame, right? They're feeling it. They can't get any closer except that they would be consumed by this flame. And they see it engulfing the entire top of the mountain. It's all on fire. It looks like a volcano, saints. And Moses is saying, come on, let's go. <laughs> it looks like a volcano. And Moses is saying, let's go. And they're going, ah, uh, you go ahead. How many know that when it's time to walk in the anointing, it's time to walk up that mountain? When it's time to, to walk in your calling, it's time to walk up that mountain. When it's time to embrace the destruction of your flesh, it's time to walk up that mountain. When you've got to embrace the calling of Yahuwah Elohim to go wherever he calls you to go, it's time to walk up that mountain. Amen and amen. Not everybody goes up the hill. Not everybody has that kind of courage. Not everybody is the designated vessel that can go into that place and come back out alive. And so this is why it is so important that we show respect. And Moses goes in and he does the job because we know he comes back with the commandments, right? But why should we die? This great fire is his glory. And I want to tell you something, saints. This is a hint to all of you. Because the word says Yahuwah Elohim will himself stand upon the ground. It's the, the word tells us that he is coming. His presence on a sinful earth causes fire. His presence in a sinful place, a place that is full of sin, will consume it like hell. Amen. So anyone standing on unholy ground Anyone standing in an unholy place, anyone standing on blood is probably going to be consumed. Their eye sockets will consume away right in front of them. This is the glory of Yahuwah. It is hotter than nuclear bombs. It is hotter than anything man can come up with. Man can't come up with that which melts the hills like wax at just his presence. This is what they're all running in fear from. And so then again, his servants are called ministers of flame. We have to be able to go in. We have to be able to endure the flame. Amen. That is not the same as those hirelings who are just trying to warm their marshmallows on the flame. That is not the same. And if you can't discern the difference, then woe to you, for you will follow most likely foolish men. But if you can discern those that he has fire tested, whom he has, he fire tested Moses. Long before this moment, he fire tested Moses. Amen. And Moses passed. Long before this moment. And so we see the glory of Yahuwah. In the natural, what does it look like? It fills entire mountains. It covers them with smoke. And it's a consuming fire. So I want you to imagine the world... Because the Bible tells us the earth will be filled with his glory. And we now know what that looks like. So in the natural, what does it look like? It literally consumes all that is corrupted, all that is evil, all that is wicked, all that is tainted. Amen. This is a dangerous hour, saints. And so many of us, uh, especially uh, those that grew up in churchianity, um, and, and again, uh, little by little, the reverence for Yahuwah's anointed was being diminished. Making the anointed common. Why? So that you can abuse them. This is what they were trying to do to Moses the whole time. Make him one of them. Just a common guy. Just a regular guy. Just, a re just the any man. Why did they want to do that? Because they have to bring you down to this point first. Then they can attack you. Many of you... You know, I want to tell you just a side note. I'm here for those that are scattered and many of you are beat up. Many of you couldn't fit in a normal fellowship because you're too on fire. You're too lit up. You're too um, uh, pressing in and they aren't ready for that. And that's why Remnant House is here. Remnant House is here for all of you who are so large in the spirit, you don't fit in these churchianity places. As soon as they start trying to strap their, their doctrine on you, it doesn't fit any more than Saul's armor fits on David. Somebody say amen. amen. 
And so this is why you have to have a house that embraces you, lets you come in and embraces you though you are prickly, difficult. This is why I don't allow it when people come in with strife, want to attack one another. You're all too strong for that. All of you are. You're all mighty men. I can't let you fight one another. Amen? We can't have that. You're mighty men. You would destroy one another. But if you unite, if you stand together, if you stand as one, putting aside your petty differences, laying aside every weight and sin that doth easily beset you just to run this race. Do you understand that there is no weapon formed against you that would prosper and every tongue raised against you yourself would condemn? And there is no army on earth that could stand in front of the saints of Elohim. And I mean, you, you just need to get it. And when you do, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. Because the devil is coming down with great wrath. His time is short. The rise of the remnant is here. Why do you think he's putting blood moons in the sky? He's letting them know their time is up. Amen and amen. And so this is why it's so important for us to be kind one to another. Love one another. You know, like really intensely defend one another. Defend your brother's right to go down a goofy road. I defend my brother's right to take a walk down a doctrinal path that I may not agree with. Go ahead, I'll wait here. Why? Because I'm not here to be the know-it-all, tell you everything. I'm here to be your friend and your brother. Right. Regardless, we all learn as we walk. I'm glad nobody stopped me from some of the journeys I went on. Amen? Because I came back and found out things as he taught. Saints, we have got to embrace our brothers' and sisters' differences not just our points of agreement. I was just free for somebody. I love my family. Anybody comes from my family, they're planning on war. Amen. And Yahuwah knows how to defend his people. And so those of you that are looking around and getting a little more and more afraid, what do you think they're trying to do? Turn a vision, tell the, turn that television off, by the way. They're just trying to invoke your fear. You need to keep your eyes on that mountain that's filled with the glory of Yahuwah. You need to keep your eyes on Messiah. You need to keep your eyes on your high priest, whoever liveth to make intercession for you. Amen. It is he who is defending us. It is he who will protect us. And he is the only one who can. In case you didn't know, the forces coming for humanity, they're not natural forces. Amen. And they feed off fear. They feed off fear like mosquitoes feed off blood. I'm telling you right now, saints, they just suck that fear right out of you and they grow off of it. And so this is why you need to become fearless. And the only way you're going to do that is with perfect love. Amen. In Psalm 86, continuing on, we see something about his ways. And he wants us to keep asking. I mean, know that we need to ask him to teach us things to know how to walk. Yeah, that mountain's full of fire. What's the narrow way to get up there without being destroyed? You notice that these men who went away, they weren't embracing their calling. And by the way, they were preserving their own lives. That's why they lost it. Any man who seeks to save his own life. Lose it. Lose it. Mm, you lose it. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, no, no, you go ahead. We'll stay here. Yeah, you just lost your life. You just lost your life. Because fear has you. Amen. And this is not the decision that you should be making. Instead, you need to make the courageous decision to go all the way in, to come by the blood of the Lamb, to come through the narrow way, to come to Messiah, the only one, the only high priest after the order of Melchizedek, the only one who can make a way where there seemed to be no way. Amen. In Psalm 86, did I tell you everybody to turn there? I'm slow. Here we go. Teach me thy way, O Yahuwah. I will walk in thy truth, in thy emet. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Where are we uniting? God, we are all uniting on the fearing of his name. Are we all good with that? Yep, we're all good. The rest we can still discuss, but we're all united. You see this? Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Yahuwah, my Elohim, with all my heart. This is where we unite, saints. 
And I will glorify thy name forevermore, for great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. So we give him glory and magnify him because of his name. This is why they covered up his name 6,000 times in the scripture with the Lord. Okay, They were trying to give his glory to another, to the Baal that the fakes worship to this day. To this day, all right, you go into the fake, the, the what what the scripture calls the synagogue of Satan. You go in, and you will see Baal all over the place, all right. And so they they told you who they worship. They have been telling you plain and simple who they worship for uh, literally thousands of years. They rejected Messiah, saints. If you don't have the Son, you don't have life. There's nothing further they have to say. You should want to hear. Amen. Once you don't have the son, we're done. And so we glorify his name. Do you realize that by saying the name Yahusha, you glorify the name of the Father? You say Yahusha, you glorify the name of the Father. Because his name is in there. Yahusha means Yahuwah is our salvation. And it makes me cringe when people put Shua, which means to cry out. Okay? Again, Yahusha. Yasha is the word for salvation. Uh, so it, write to me if you still need some further clarity on this. Happy to point you at some very good teachers and ministers. Again, I'm an apostle, but there's prophets and teachers, right? So there's other vessels that will come and confirm the word with signs and wonders following even. Yahu will confirm it so that you will know that it is him. Amen. And so he says, I will glorify thy name forevermore. This is very important. This is why I can be in a little, you know, I can have disagreements with my brother on this or that, but we unite on his name. We unite in Mashiach. We unite. Ah, we might not agree on this or that, or we're still learning certain things over here, over here, over here. But so what? We're united on his name. This is what matters. This is why they're going to persecute you. And why do they hate you? You shall be hated. Why? For my name's sake. Don't forget it. Amen. And not, not for any other doctrinal points, although those are important. But it's going to be his name. This is where we unite. So if we're as long as we're united on that, everything else, we can we can walk together. We are agreed. Okay, we can walk together. You say, but I'm not agreeing with everything. Oh, it's all right. You agreed on his name. You agreed on Ma Mashiach. Now at least you can walk together. I mean, it's not possible for us to be in agreement 100% of every thought and idea. Frankly, would you really want somebody in agreement with every thought and idea that you have? <laughs> don't you want a little check and balance in there i do <laughs> i'm grateful for my brethren amen and so uh, we see this and he glorify his name forevermore and now again going back a little bit going back to exodus 24 um in in, he, in he's speaking here when he's doing these things he's doing them as a type and a figure or a type and a shadow right so we're seeing the way heaven operates. We're seeing how that he summons the son, right? And the son who is the high priest, he is the one who goes and delivers the word of Yahuwah. He is, this is what we're seeing here as a picture. In Exodus chapter 24 and verse 16, and the glory of Yahuwah abode upon Mount Sinai. So you see, the glory was contained within the cloud. So it looked like a cloud. And that's why some people are seeing cloud formations and things, and they're going, oh my goodness, things are changing on earth. And why the enemy is messing with clouds, trying to bring his own glory with fake clouds, right? And the cloud covered it in six days, and the seventh day he called on the Moshe out of the midst of the cloud. When? On what day? Seventh day. And the sight of the glory of Yahuwah was like devouring fire on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. So what did it look like? A devouring fire. And Moshe went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moshe was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. So Moshe went up into this fire that looked so bad, it looked like it was burning the entire mountain down. And he walked up into it. Let me ask you a question. Are you fearless enough to do that? Amen. And you see, this is the kind of courage that perfect love will give you. This is what he's calling us to. Because you have to walk 
into places that others will not go. You have to be fearless. Amen. This is how the earth is filled with his glory. Amen. In fact, in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2, um, we're going to turn there very quickly. You're going to see this. Um, but, but I just want you to remember that Moses was not afraid to walk into the midst of the cloud. That's right. Don't be afraid to walk into your anointing. Don't be afraid to walk into your office. Yes, there's going to be people attack you. Yes, there's going to be people that come against you. But brother, I want to encourage you to assume that call that he's pointed you to Walk in it with great humility and let him confirm you with signs and wonders following. Don't worry about what people say. Amen and amen. That was free for somebody. In Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 12, it says, Woe to him that buildeth the town with blood, and established a city by iniquity. So he's pronounced a woe unto all the cities that were built this way. Where the, where the wicked men, when they built a foundation, poured the blood of a child or the blood of some other sacrifice on the ground to curse the ground. They established this city by iniquity. They know what they're doing. They're doing it on purpose. Behold, it is not of Yahuwah Sebaot that the people shall labor in the very fire and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahuwah as the waters cover the sea. Amen. What did that just say? It says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge. There's going to be a lack of knowing, and then the earth is suddenly going to be filled with a knowing. They didn't know, now they know. How many of you have had this experience where you didn't know his name, but now you know his name? You didn't know the tricks the enemy played, but now you know the tricks. You didn't see how many times they had pulled a fast one, but now your eyes are open. What happened? The earth is being filled with the knowledge of the glory. The knowledge of the glory. And so we're coming into a knowing and there's a surety, a security of knowing that he is putting inside of those he has chosen. So if you're one of those that is coming into a certainty, coming into a security, right? You're walking in a certainty of, of faith that is fearless. This is because he has hand selected you. And this is why we can't just go out here. We try it. I mean, we. I've tried it for 27 years. It doesn't work. Uh, you just go out here and say, hey, everybody. Come on, you know, doesn't work. And it doesn't matter how we narrow the, the grouping, doesn't work. He handpicks yeah. for certain houses and certain things. And he also hand removes. Hand removes. And I'm grateful for that because there are certain people that I would have held on to thinking there, were, there was nothing wrong. And he causes them to be exposed and then removed. Right? Versus those that are sincere and genuine and quiet. Very quiet, by the way. They're the ones that are of great price before him. So what, what man prizes and what he prizes are two different things. And Habakkuk tells us that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of Yahuwah's glory. And, and so he does not want the people to labor in very fire. He doesn't want you to stay there in a place of vanity, which is exactly where we are today. The reason why your monetary magic, money magic systems, these Babylonian money magic systems work is because people, even believers, continue to trade their labor, their essence, their soul, their spirit, their mind, their intellect for it. They're empowering this fake thing with that which is real. The moment they stop, which they're waning now, you see, so it's dropping because they're, they're starting to figure it out, they're starting to wake up. You're making this a value. This value doesn't come from this thing, this commerce, this monetary unit. This comes from you. You're the one made in his image and after his likeness, and you're the one empowering it. And so if you were to discontinue, they would collapse because they need you more than you need them, a lot more. Amen. Ain't no trillionaires out there growing no food. <laughs> okay? Ain't no billionaires out there growing any crops. All right? They all need you. 
the, the, the regular people of the earth, right? And they can't move without you. And so uh, to pretend that they're your, you know, that they're over you and more powerful is actually a trick. They tricked earth into laboring for nothing. And this is why he said they shouldn't labor in the fire. <laughs> the people weary themselves for very vanity. And that's exactly what they're doing. And we talked about vanity last week. So, uh, and I just want to encourage you to not be afraid in going forward. Why did the children of Israel end up dying in the wilderness? Fear. Simple answer. One word. Fear. One word. Fear. Fear made them complain. Fear made them doubt. Fear gave them unbelief. Fear made them murmur. And fear kept them from going up the mountain. Fear kept them on the bottom when they should have gone to the top. Amen and amen. In Romans chapter 15, it says the Elohim of patience. How many know that we have an Elohim who is greatly patient with us? He's not willing that any should perish, but that all will come to repentance. In Romans 15 and verse 5, it says, Now the Elohim of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to uh, Mashiach, Yahusha, that you may with one mind and with one mouth glorify Elohim, even the father of our master, Yahusha HaMashiach. Right? So we have to be like-minded one toward another, according to Mashiach, Yahusha, and that you may with one mind and one mouth. What? With one mind and one mouth. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, what? Well, that means we can't talk about things we disagree with. Nah, yeah, that may not be the thing we're going to do with one mind and one mouth. So what will we say with one mind and one mouth? His name, mm -hmm. his kingdom, his gospel, the forgiveness of sin. See that? We can agree on a lot of things. Right? With one mind and one mouth. Glorify Elohim. Don't glorify yourselves. Glorify Elohim. Even the father of our master, Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen. So we're clear about who we're glorifying. And we're clear about why we have to do what we're doing. And that we have to be like-minded. Like-minded. How many have ever tried to get together with people who had a whole different mind? Like, they're not on the same page with you. They don't agree with you. They are not like-minded. There is no way you're going to do anything successful with people who are not like-minded. I have found that I cannot cooperate nor work with people who are trying to only preserve themselves. I, I've watched this consistently, and I keep praying, please remove from me all the self-absorbed, people who speak evil of, a, of their brethren behind their backs, people who do not actually wish for each other's success, right. right? All the backbiting and devouring, all those people, please remove them. And you know what's interesting? They end up thinking it's their idea. Yeah, that's so true. It's genius. It's really genius because he wants to keep us Pure. He wants those he has selected and only those he's selected. And in case you haven't read the scripture and know this, he's good with low numbers. He's good with eight. He'll destroy the whole world and save eight. It's not his will. He's not willing that any should perish, but don't get it twisted. And this is where the world has misjudged misunderstood they think his grace means that they can do whatever they want no his grace is giving you time to repent he gave jezebel space to repent she didn't repent is it pace jehu no it's not jehu is now coming for jezebel amen in philippians chapter 2 and verse 2 fulfill ye my joy that ye may that ye be like-minded having the same love being of one accord of one mind let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Here, same theme, second witness of it, right? But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. I esteem my brother higher than myself. Even though I know my office, I still respect my brother. You see that? You esteem your brother higher than yourselves. You think, well, maybe I may be off or maybe I missed something. Let me double check, right? Look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others. This word is so central to Remnant House. We look to the blessing of our brethren, or as I've said it many times, you should have a plan for the prosperity of your brother, the prosperity of your sister. If that is of importance to you, then I would suggest you need to be born again. You didn't do it right the first time. 
need to be born again. You don't love your brother, need to be born again. You don't care about them, need to be born again. You, you don't make a plan for their success, you need to be born again. And you say, Peter, I didn't even know that. Listen, it's natural. When you love your brother and your sister, when that uh, genuine, authentic love comes up, you don't wish them harm. You're not looking for them to be destroyed. You simply want them safe and blessed. Amen. You want away from them all those false voices and false people who are lying, but you want them, those that are set apart, to be blessed. Amen. And so understand this. Um, look not to every man unto his own thing, but every man also unto the things of others is the word of Yahuwah Elohim. And so anybody who's only seeking to save his own life is going to lose it. That is the word of Yahuwah. And you have to understand the knowledge of it in order for his glory to come into your world. And the earth will be filled with his glory, even in the destruction of the doubter, the fearful, and the unbeliever. And so he's being very clear. He's telling us straight up that we have to take this seriously. And I'm coming in for a landing here uh, because many times people question the vessels that Yahuwah sends. And I think it's appropriate that you question. Uh, people that around me, close to me, have gotten offended on my behalf because someone maybe questions my calling or the questions the calling of a particular ministry. You should never become offended at that. If you don't believe them by the words that they speak, at least believe them by the works that they do. And then you will know what they are. Uh, people are, they, they don't hide very well. Uh, they are what they are. And so uh, he is speaking to us in this hour uh, to be a people that understand how to be a vessel of honor. In a great house, there are vessels of honor and some to dishonor, and they're still in the same house. And so to be a vessel of honor is to be a clean vessel fit for the master's use. Amen. And not everybody has respect for that. Many people didn't respect Moses, even though he could walk right up into the fire. They didn't have respect for Yahuwah's anointing. Um, and to this day, they still don't. And so this is one of the things that will change. Um, we see that he corrected it back then. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So all of those people who didn't think that the fivefold mattered, that the anointed of Yahuwah mattered, that his vessels didn't matter, will be going through some fire. And they will be getting major correction. And they will come out the other side loving one another. So they'll come out of that fire going, I'm real sorry. I love you. I respect you. And I'll never speak against you again. They'll, they'll get healed. Um, this is not to punish. This is meant to train so we can stop making the same mistakes we've been making. So again, remember, he's not trying to destroy you. He just wants you to stop doing things that are interfering with your blessing. In John chapter 7, he makes a very clear statement. This is one of the first things he taught me in 1995 when he was setting me apart for the work of the ministry. My objection to him was your objection. Who is this dude, <laughs> right? Who is this guy? And how am I authorized to speak anything? And you have all these other vessels out there. Why do you need me? And, and so I asked a lot of questions when he started to call me. When he's telling me to stop everything else I'm doing to drop business, to drop other things, and trust him. And this was the passage he took me to. Because, saints, I want to tell you something. I knew full well when I walked out that there would be people just waiting for me to make an error, yeah. just waiting for me to make a mistake. And so I began to tell him about that. I spoke to Elohim about it, and here's what he said. In John chapter 7 and verse 16, it says, Yahushua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine. It's one of the first lessons he taught me. Your doctrine is not yours, Peter. I will give it to you. You will simply tell them what I tell you. You see this? This is how you are trained. He trained me like this from day one. And he said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. You see that? If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of Elohim or whether I speak of myself. So first, the person has to be willing to do the will of Elohim. That's the person who can discern the vessel. Only the person who is willing to do whatever Elohim tells him to do. Any man will do his will. 
That's the person who knows the doctrine. Okay? Because that's the one he's going to talk to. First, you have to be willing to do whatever he says. Right? He's going to know the doctrine, whether it be of Elohim or whether I speak of myself. Watch this now. Because a lot of vessels out there, a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of people speaking of themselves. He that speaketh of himself. I figured it out. I got the answer. I got it, guys. Look. I figured it all out. Let me show you. Right? What is he seeking? Yeah. Pay attention. He that speaketh of himself. In other words, he's the source of this information. He's seeking his own glory. Got copyright on it, patented it, put it on a lunchbox, right? He wants his own glory. He wants the book rights. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him. Oh, there's a difference here. Look at this contrasting picture. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him. The same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. None. Because he's seeking the glory of him who sent it. Right? And thou has sent, as thou has sent, all right, so he's seeking the glory of him who sent it. We're going to go to John 17, so turn there very quickly. We're going to get there, and just we're going to close. All right? So this is what he told me. He said, if you, if you are speaking what I send you to speak, no one can call you an unrighteous vessel. They can say it, but it is not true. Unrighteousness comes because you're speaking your own. You're seeking your own glory. All right? But when you're seeking the glory of him, Yahusha, who sent you, he alone is king. There's no other king but him. Amen? When you're seeking his glory, there's no unrighteousness in you. And so just, just know that because there's going to be people that are going to accuse you of unrighteousness. They're going to accuse you of things. And they're going to call you names, right? They're going to, they're going to try to belittle you. They're going to try to get you to stop, basically. Bottom line. It's what it's all about. It's about getting you to stop. Now, you just simply need to know that if you're speaking the words he gave you and not seeking your own glory, you are true. And there's no unrighteousness in you. Uh, and this is a very, very big tell. Because, again, anybody seeking preserving themselves... To their own benefit right so they're speaking things to their benefit that's different whereas Mashiach sends you in and you got to say things sometimes that you know the crowd look at Paul Paul said things they stoned him they beat him with rods they, they, they beat this man senseless all because he refused to say anything but what was given to him amen the same is true and no unrighteousness is in him and so before you call someone an unrighteous vessel who stands before Yahuwah Elohim, you need to be aware what whose glory they're seeking. That's how you determine it. Amen? So any man that's seeking his own glory, that's the one that's unrighteous. The one that's seeking the glory of Yahusha, the one who sent him, there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen? And so the glory is the defining factor. You need to understand the glory. Because if you're seeking your own, you will be destroyed. But if you're magnifying the glory of Yahuwah, if you're magnifying the name that is above every other name, if you're magnifying his word and magnifying his commandments, who's getting the glory? He gets the glory. Amen? He gets the glory. The blessing is, I get the blessing. He, can, he gets the glory, I get the blessing. Amen? Amen. I thank you for the blessing, Father. I thank you for blessing my brothers and my sisters. I thank you that we do not touch your glory. I thank you that we do not touch these things. But instead, we obey you, we honor you, we bless you, and we give glory to you in everything. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. And so, saints, in John chapter 17, closing out here, as the, uh, and he says in verse 18 that he sent us into the world. He sent the apostles into the world. Now, that's not everybody. That's the ones he sent. And they're meant to bring a message to those to which they are, to whom they are sent. Amen. Not everybody becomes apostles. Not everybody becomes a prophet. Not everybody becomes a teacher. Right? So there's very few of those. But they are sent to all who can hear. In John 17 and verse 18, As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. Look at that. And for their sakes I sanctify myself. So he now is set apart as high priest 
for the sake of everyone who would operate in the royal priesthood on the earth so that we would have a connection in heaven in front of the holy tabernacle. The censer still there, that thou mayest be sanctified, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall what? Believe on me through their word. They're believing on him because he's the one getting the glory, not the vessel. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be echad. They're the echad squad. Amen. They may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Whoa. That they may be one, echad, even as we are one, echad. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, in echad, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. See this? That they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Anyone questioning his eternal nature, the eternal nature of Mashiach, how that before the world began he is. Amen. And he is he who walks through the ancient of days, the son of man, who is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, through which we all must pass. And no man comes to the father, but by him. Amen. And so we see here that his glory is passed now to his apostles, passed now to all those who believe, who receive according to their word, all calling us to Echad. Now, even the 12 weren't ahad in the natural in every detail. Yeah, Thomas wasn't even sure. But he still calls us to be united because every detail isn't what he means. We're all growing in knowledge. We're all growing in understanding. And so if you made the litmus test, we have to agree on every single thing. You're never going to find, you don't even agree with you a year after you said whatever you said. <laughs> <laughs> You don't even agree with you, okay? You start to disagree with yourself, <laughs> okay? So we got to we got to not lower the standard, but change the way we view that. Uh, remember that we have to be united on the important matters. And so today, as I pray for you, my prayer is that we would put aside every weight and every sin and manifest the authentic glory of Yahuwah. And that glory is manifested, saints, in our love one for another. That is how his glory shows and that the world would know that he was sent is that we are one because we're united. Listen, that doesn't mean that we have to always have it all figured out, but bless the living Elohim, we are united. I mean, we're, we're at least committed to figuring it out together. And even as we continue to go, he's gonna keep clarifying things. What's this thousand years for? If not, to teach us all the things we thought we knew. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for your glory. I thank you that you manifest your glory in the earth. I thank you that you move through your chosen vessels, your set-apart people, your remnant, whom you have chosen, set-apart, cleaned, and perfected for this purpose. I thank you, Father, for every vessel that you are using in this hour to minister your gospel, the good news, to those who need to hear it. I thank you for the workers that you are releasing into the harvest even now. And I pray for more workers, more laborers into the harvest. And I pray that you would continue to cause our house and the many houses that you're raising to be strong, to be fortified with people who are sincere. Thank you for removing all of those who were insincere. Thank you for making a space for the new who must now come and take the spot that they have vacated. And so, Father, I pray for those who are coming in today, who are taking up what others have abandoned. And I pray you would bless them, strengthen them, keep them, cause your face to shine upon them, and grant them your shalom. In Mashiach's holy name, Yahusha, we pray. Amen.
Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We need to praise him. Amen. We need to glorify him. Oh, let's just lift him up right now. Oh, just give him the glory. Oh, saints, just, just give him the glory. Just magnify the name of Yahuwah. Just magnify his glorious name. Just magnify his wondrous truth. Saints, we have to be a people. Oh, I pray this right now over all of us, that we are a people that know how to glorify. I said we need to be a people that know how to glorify the name, to give glory to our King, to not touch up an ounce of that glory, nor seek any of it for ourselves. Oh, Father, I pray for every single one. Let them be set free. Let them be a people that know how to bring you glory. In Mashiach's holy name, amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you know, saints, I know there are many of you that are <coughs> still trying to find your fold, trying to find the place that Yahuwah has called you. In 2015, he sent us to the Sea of Galilee. And there, I thought I was done. I had reached 20 years of ministry and thought I was finished. I thought I was putting my mantle down. And he grabbed it and threw it back at me and said, help me gather the remnant. And so this is what we're doing. I'm not trying to um, bring anyone into any one place or any one thing. We're simply trying to encourage you, unite you. We have brethren all over the earth that have joined Remnant House so that they are not without a fold, so that they have a house they call home. And if you're one of those people that have not fit anywhere else, maybe you've tried, and I mean, you've, you've given it the try, you did. You tried to be in these different places and it just didn't work. And so I believe this is why Yahuwah has raised up this house. Uh, we catch what others miss. We catch vessels that others um, would not be able to receive. We catch vessels that, you, they, that ministries may not be able to handle because of their gift, because of your anointing. And so if you're one of those people, we welcome you. Uh, we encourage you to join and um, uh, fill out uh, information so we know how to contact you and reach out to you. Uh, we're doing everything we can to be a blessing to our brethren. And so those of you that are part of this house, thank you again for your faithfulness. Thank you for your giving. Uh, without it, we would not be here. And so if you're giving and standing in faith as a cheerful giver of Remnant House, that's all we ask. And somebody was, uh, and this is just for all of our members, somebody was... Uh, we were talking and we talk a lot about resources and what we need and what we have to have. But I don't need any one person to try to be superhuman. We need every member to just do what every member is called to do. That's it. Let every joint supply. And so we don't need any superhumans. What we need are people just being faithful, honoring Yahuwah. Let him see you. Not Peter, not Mindy, not the rest of the house, just him. Let him see you bring your gift. Let him see you honor him and may his blessing now be manifest upon your life. Let his glory now come in and consume all that which is not of him in your life. In Mashiach's name. Thank you so much for joining us. I pray you're blessed in this hour on this Shabbat. May Yahuwah bless each and every one of you. And remember, Yahusha HaMashiach, he alone is King of Kings. of milk and land of honey, land of blessing and land of curse, land that's in our hearts so dearly, the shofar will sound and we will go home.
far will sound and we will go And land 